Hello, this is Taylor Talks Comics, and I'm doing a special guest video for Organic Price Books. Today, we're going to cover the new box set that came out for Love and Rockets, the 40th anniversary collection, and it covers the first 50 issues. But this box set is incredible. It's amazing. It's so beautifully put together, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to show off how beautifully put together it is and, and explain why um, or why not you should add this to your collection and exactly who would um, Love and Rockets appeal to. Um, so thank you for joining us. So this is the, uh, the front of the box set. These are all the spines of the books here. They're getting eight volumes, eight hardcovers within this box set. Um, I love the design of this. This is some Jaime Hernandez artwork here. And again, I'm going to explain what Love and Rockets is too for the uh, what Love and Rockets is for the people that maybe um, have not read it before. So don't worry about that. But um, so we have Jaime Hernandez artwork here. Uh, the first fifty. We have the names of the three Hernandez brothers that are involved in the project. That's Gilbert, Jaime, and Mario Hernandez. Uh, it says Love and Rockets right there. The first fifty because this is the first 50 issues. Obviously, people that are more used to like Marvel DC comic book issues um, might be wondering how you can fit 50 issues in such a large box set. Uh, a lot of the issues were oversized, um, in not, not only in trim size, but also just in page count. <clears throat> Especially some of the first few issues were even like up to 64 pages. And then down here on the lower part of the spine, you can see which issues each volume contains in a nice classy kind of way here so this first volume has one through five six through thirteen here all the way to this last one this last one doesn't have any page any issue numbers and you can see 50 is in here it's because this last book here is a historical document behind the scenes collection that i'm going to show off too because there's a lot of cool stuff in that last volume uh, spinning around the box set here we have awesome artwork from gilbert hernandez the older brother um, it was mostly Gilbert and Jaime that worked on, on these comics. Mario, who I, the aforementioned Mario, um, did a little bit here and there, but it was mostly, uh, Gilbert and Jaime. Back here, we have this kind of blown up image with it kind of cut off of the Love and Rockets logo. Um, the first one that was designed by Todd Klein, um, famous letter, Todd Klein. And then we have some more artwork on this side. So that's the box set, or the box itself. Um, I'm gonna pull these volumes out now, try to do it carefully to, uh, might help to have some gravity involved here. They are a little snug in there, and they do have little finger holes on the sides to help you get them out. But I think if you just tilt the box and pull one volume out, they, they all come out pretty easily once from there. So let's start from the beginning here. Let's just pull them all out. And then we'll go over all of them. So this box set, you can buy from Organic Price Books. I believe the, here's the inside too, just plain red. And the top of the box set, I guess I should show you. And I believe this comes off right here, but I'm just going to leave it on there because it has a cool little blurb about them. Um, I believe JP told me that they are sold out at the diamond level for these books, these hardcover, this box set. Uh, but it wouldn't shock me if it sold this well um, for Fantagraphics to do a restock. So if you can't find it on, on Organic Price Books at the moment, just stay tuned. Um, and JP will let you know when it's available. Um, okay, so <clears throat> this is the first, what I'm gonna do here in this video, I'm gonna show you, show off all the books and then afterwards, I'll explain what Love Rockets is, and you can see the books I have in the background here. Uh, I'll explain the different ways of collecting these, because this is a pretty pricey box set. It's a $400 cover price, which is, I know people are like, what? That's crazy. Um, but on organic price books, they had a price of $280. So you can get a, that's a pretty hefty discount, you think, on a $400 item. Um, and it includes 50 issues of one, what I think is one of the greatest comic books of all time. But I will show you some more affordable ways to collect this if you're just trying to try out the series. But we'll go over that. Right now, I just want to show off the books. So this is the first book here. 
with artwork and you already saw the spine but there's the back so they all have like this um same similar design choice here where they kind of blew up some panel comic book panels within the comics and then uh, made them like red and white ink instead of black and white because these are black and white comics which we'll get to when i'm talking about what makes the series so great this is the third hardcover and they do alternate the artwork too between jaime and gilbert like this is some gilbert artwork here they have very distinct styles between the two brothers and this is jaime you know it's jaime because jaime has all the uh, pro wrestling stuff involved in the uh series some more this is the what would this be the six hardcover in the set see this crazy little girl holding her arm got to make you intrigued to want to read this series right this one awesome boxing image there and then here is the like I said the last volume of the set that includes a lot of behind the scenes stuff um, there's Jaime and there's Gilbert a young Jaime and Gilbert because they're both in their late 50s early 60s by now I believe no they both got to be in their 60s because this is the 40th anniversary and they started this in the early 20s so the back set so um those are the hardcovers and then within the hardcovers before we get to what makes this series so great sorry for bumping the camera there uh i want to show you how these how these are collected within within these hardcovers so each of them have these end papers where there's this bright red with that classy looking font there and then within these first seven hardcovers in the set, they just get right into it as far as the issues. There's no, no bells and whistles, no, no fuss, no muss. They just get right into the issues. And these are true facsimile reprints. Um, let me see if I can move my camera. Let me get like an overhead shot here. So I want to show these off properly. Okay, so these are true facsimile reprints. And what I mean by that is if you're used to Marvel, DC, and how they reprint things, they just get the digital files and, and plug them all together. They take out all the ads, they take out all the indicia in the beginning of the issues. Sometimes they take off the title lettering on the covers. Sometimes they, they'll take out the letters and all those things. These have all of that intact. These are as if... Fantagraphics took the first 50 issues of Love and Rockets. They found like a copy of each issue and literally bound them together in hardcovers. There's nothing in here that you'll be missing out on. Had It'll be as if the same thing as if you were collecting these off the stands one at a time, all 50 issues. And I love that about it. And all the way down to the paper stock. So this cover here, I don't know if you can see, but all the covers in here are color because that's how they were originally released and they're glossy but the inside pages are matte, just like the original comics. And then you'll get to the end of the issue and the back cover is glossy again, right here and then matte. So this right here, as you can see, when I said that the, the first few issues were had a lot more pages to them than your normal traditional comic book, this right here is the first issue of Love and Rockets, all those pages. And it's cover to cover, just as if like that issue was bound into this book. And then you get on to the next uh, cover. And they even kept like, Fantagraphics didn't have like the proper Fantagraphics uh, name yet for the publisher. So they even keep like the old stuff there. And you'll also notice the way this book is built. They left some white trim here. And that's so that the book will lay flat. You know, you have a lot of uh, gutter loss issues sometimes in some books, DC Marvel, but this is sewn binding. You have a nice eye there um, and it lays over flat. There's no splash pages, so you don't have an issue there, but it just lays over nice and flat so that you can enjoy the artwork and there's no awkward like gutter loss or anything like that. 
It's a true facsimile comic books. Um, all the way down to you open up some like these early issues had opened up with a Gary Groth kind of an essay letter, if you will, um, about what makes Love and Rocket so great. Gary Groth, if you're not familiar, was the is the publisher of Fanagraphics. He's the one that started Fanagraphics. Um, and with Kim Thompson. I, sorry. So Gary Groth and Kim Thompson. Started Fanagraphics together. Um, and one of the things that he started, though, was the Comics Journal, where he was very critical of comic books <clears throat> and Marvel, DC comic books in general, because those were the big two. And uh, so he has a lot of critical essays here that are really interesting to read. Um, and you even get the same indicia that was in the original comic book. And then at the end of the issues, you have more of that. And then you'll get to this, when they start having letters pages. So the back of the issue has the letters pages with a picture of Jaime, Mario, and Gilbert there. So true facsimile. And then, like I said, the first seven volumes are just that. They're literally just the comics. There's no no extras or anything like that. These are all just the comics. And then you get to that last volume. And let me try to slide it out here carefully. The last volume here. has all these extras in it. So this was the original cover to the self-published, self-printed Love and Rockets number one that they sent to Gary Groth for a review. They sent it to him in um, 1979, 1980, 1981. Um, the dates on that are kind of fuzzy because I know the first uh, issue came out after this, after the fact. But this is what they sent to him. And it was only 32 pages, and they sent it to Gary Groth for a review in Comics Journal. They, you know, they read Comics Journal. They enjoyed his kind of punk rock ethos of of kind of being cynical and kind of crapping on the comic book industry because they had similar thoughts. And they wrote it. They sent it to him for a review, and then he sent a letter back saying, "Hey, can we publish this?" And that's how Love and Rockets kind of got started here. So this is the first. This, what this is here, this book here. This last volume in the hardcover set is a collection of essays and articles um, in real time as they came out about Love and Rockets as as the comic was coming out, and then hundreds of pages of extra comics that have been released elsewhere by Jaime and Gilbert and Mario are included in here too for the first time um, to be ever collected in a book. So this is like a historical document of what makes Love and Rockets so great. There's a, also a great PBS documentary that just came out to celebrate the 40th anniversary. It's on YouTube. If you look up Love and Rockets PBS, it'll probably be like the first thing that pops up. It's like 55 minutes. And then you get interviews from the brothers and a bunch of other comics folks to uh, explain what makes this such a great comic book series. And then here's some press clippings, some cool um, band posters because they were so entrenched in the punk scene. Uh, some more articles where they appeared in. Some covers they did for some different periodicals, interviews. Some more covers. And then there's like hundreds of pages of comics here. That Some of them are in color. Some of them have never been reprinted anywhere. They actually show you where they're originally printed at and here. So just some, a bunch of bonus comics that didn't actually appear in Love and Rockets, which is great. And then here's the covers, too. Um, <clears throat> covers for different trade paperbacks when they started being collected that weren't in the original issues. So they, they're they not going to be in the other hardcovers because um, these were like the trade paperbacks. But they want you, they want you to see what they looked like. Uh, there's a 10-year anniversary issue. I have that. <clears throat> mechanics and they've been collected a number of different ways so real quickly before i get into because this first part of the video i'm just trying to show off for the people that maybe are somewhat familiar with love and rockets the last part of the video is going to be for complete new newbies that are interested in w wanting to read love and rockets so as i adjust my camera here 
Back here, these are paperback omnibus editions that they've released. There's been 14 volumes so far. Uh, volume 15 comes out in January. And this is what they look like. Um, I can show you. I can cover it real fast. They're really cool design by Jacob Covey. They just have like, that's what they look like. I mean, they're a little bit smaller than your standard comic book size. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I don't break up my set here. Um, a little bit smaller than your standard comic book size. And uh, the reason for that is because these are true to size as far as the, the way that they were collected. So you can see how they're kind of kind of square bound a little bit, kind of treasury sized. Um, so these are shrunken down. I'll do some art comparisons for you too. Uh, but these are omnibus. They call them omnibus. There's no, the word omnibus is not actually on the books itself. But if you look at them on the Fanographics website or on Wikipedia or whatever, they're going to call them omnibuses. And they are true to that name. The omnibus name just means, you know, like a complete set of comics collected together. Um, but they're also not in order as far as in the same way these are. So the easiest example I can give you as far as how these are collected and how these are collected are that these, um, as far as like mainstream comics, if you're familiar with how Hellboy's been collected, Hellboy's been collected in trade paperbacks and library editions. So trade paperback omnibus editions and then library edition hardcovers. The trade paperbacks for Hellboy are collected in chronological order of story. So if Mike Mignolis wrote a story 10 years into Hellboy, but that story actually took place in, let's say, Hellboy year one, the, omnib the paperback omnibus would collect that at the beginning. So it collected in chronological order by story, not chronologically how about how it was released, if that makes sense. And then the library editions of Hellboy, the hardcovers, collect everything chronologically by how the comic book issues and stories came out onto the stands, regardless of when the story takes place. Same deal here. So they've really curated this, um, these paperback omnibuses for Love and Rockets, to be chronologically kind of as the story takes place. So kind of piece together. You're not going to get just like issue one through um, issue 50, like right here or anything like that. They're really just kind of thrown together in chronological order of story. Um, these, however, like I've shown you, are just literally the exact 50 issues in order. Nothing changed. Another difference about these. Um, I'm going to go over like the brother thing and how why there's three different brothers working on this. These are collected in by story so these this first volume is the jaime hernandez comics second volume is gilbert third is jaime fourth is gilbert so and then one of them has all three of the brothers with shorter stories and you can and they plug in the mario stories in there too the mario hernandez um so these are separated by brothers because <sighs> love and rockets is like i said it's mostly jaime and gilbert and jaime writes his own stories gilbert writes his own stories they don't really intersect so in here, they, they collect them separately like that. So these are the most affordable option. Like these are, I think, 20, yeah, 19 dollars cover price. I don't know if that's gone up with the newer printings, but they're about $20 each. So if you're just wanting to try 11 Rockets, obviously you don't want to be spending $400 on a box set to try something, try a comic. You can order these, and most of these have been come back into print recently. I spoke to JP from Organic Price Books. He said that... Um, even if it's on his website, if it's available through Diamond, you can hit him up through the contact page on the website and say, hey, I want this volume of Love and Rockets, the paperback version. And if it's in print, he can order it for you and throw it up on the website. So if you don't see it on the Organic Price website, don't don't fret. You can order these as long as they're in print. And I believe most of these are in print because they just reprinted a bunch of them. Um, where I'd recommend starting if you're wanting to try one of these out is with one of the brothers' comics. My favorite of the two brothers is Jaime. So I'd start with Maggie and the Mechanic, which is this first volume here. Um, that's the Jaime stories. Or if you want to try out Gilbert's stories, you can try out Heartbreak Soup, which starts the Palomar stories. Or you can get them both, and you get to try out both Jaime and Gilbert and see if you like it. And if you do, then keep going on. Um, either collecting these or maybe uh, throw down the, the cash for the, the box set. 
<clears throat> but these will always, these are evergreen. Fantagraphics tries to keep this in print at all times. So if you're even trying to collect this set and one or two volumes is out of print, just be patient. You'll, you'll be able to find it. Um, now let's talk about what makes Love and Rockets so great. As I move the camera back here, I'm trying not to make this video too long, but I love talking comics. Um, that's why I'm Taylor Talks Comics, but in Love and Rockets, I think it truly is one of the best comic book series of all time. So having an opportunity to highlight that is great. All right. So, um, Love and Rockets is started off with Gilbert and Jaime and Mario just drawing comics. They grew up, they loved comics, their mom loved comics. They had constantly just had comic books in their house. Mostly like Marvel DC stuff, right? Um, I'm just going to flip through the artwork as I talk about this. So, they, and they grew up drawing all the time. They had stories where their dad would, you know, rip up grocery uh, brown paper bags and just throw it, like, spread it out on the floor and just say, you know, do some artwork, draw, draw on here. And they would draw comics. Well, Gil, or Mario is the, one of the older brothers. They, they have, I think there's six or seven kids in the family, but only those three did comics. Mario's one is the older of the three that did comics. And he got married and had kids and moved out of the house while Jaime and Gilbert were still there. And Jaime and Gilbert just drew comics for fun. And then Mario came to the house one day and was like, what are you doing? Like, this is amazing looking. It's like, we should print this. So then Jaime and Gilbert were like, okay. So that's when they printed the first issue of Love and Rockets and... Um, sent it off to Gary Groth for a review. And then, like I said, Gary Groth said, let's print this, let's publish this. And that first issue was only 32 pages. So Gary Groth said, I want to make this a big one. Let's make it 64 pages. And they did that. Um, so that first issue has got stories by Jaime, Gilbert, and Mario. And the name Love and Rockets implies that there's like love stories in science fiction, as you can imagine. Really, though, this is just a platform and an opportunity for the brothers to just draw the comics they wanted to see. And Jaime's stories were the locust stories. They, their central two characters are Maggie and Hopi. And then they have other, a great cast of characters around them, like Penny Century, Rand Race, and that such. And Maggie and Hopi are two girls that grow up in... Hoppers, which is a city that's very similar to Oxnard, California, and they grew up in the punk scene. So in a lot of the Hame stories, you'll see punk rock, pro wrestling, um, you know, soap opera kind of drama, teenage angst, that sort of thing, and it all entrenched into his comics. And it's all magnificent. So because in both stories, Gilbert and Jaime's, you really become involved in the characters' lives and, and you truly care about these characters. One of the great things about Love and Rockets is that the characters age in real time. So over the course of 50 issues, um, you're going to see the characters age in real time. So Maggie and Hopi are, you know, late teens, early 20s. When the story starts, you get to see them grow up and to be middle-aged and how that affects them. So you become so entrenched in these characters' lives that you grow grow with them. Gilbert's stories take place in Palomar. And it's a great town where there's a lot of... Uh, sorry. A lot of, like, here's Luba. Here's the central character of um, Palomar. She's like the central figurehead um, matriarch of the town. And Palomar has a lot of great cultural aspects of the Latino culture. And um, that's one of the great things about Love and Rockets too, is it was one of the first comics to really depict uh, Latinos and black characters in a truly authentic way and lesbians and LGBTQ community um, characters in a really authentic way to where they've been praised by a number of people. They're, you know, Gilbert and Jaime are two Latino male, you know, straight, straight male, straight men. Um, but they, the way they've depicted women, the way they've depicted, um, 
LGBTQ communities, uh, minorities, even outside of their own ethnicity, has been praised by a number of people. And I think one of the great quotes was that they, I saw an interview with them um, where they didn't like the way that Latinos were depicted in movies and, and TV and stuff. So they really had that as part of their um, desire when they're making these comic books to make change that but there's so many other things in these comics that really like i said it's really them making with the comics that they want to make you'll see like monsters in here robots sometimes you'll see uh magic or suspense or um i don't want to say like not magic in a sense of like waving wands and that kind of thing but it's kind of surrealist kind, kind of stuff and a lot of genre fiction i think would be a good way to say it too where they're just studying all of these types of things that they love. And any moment they get bored with one thing, they just move on to the next. But at the heart of it all are these characters that you're going to fall in love with and want to read more about. more about, And you're just not going to be able to get enough of them. The artwork is just incredible. So it's all black and white artwork. But I, for my money, this is like the best black and white artwork ever in comics. I think the hardest thing about black and white comics for a lot of people... Um, would be to would making the characters look distinct because obviously when you have color like all the covers are in color you can have like, different hair color styles different clothing clothing styles when you have color you can make it very easy who who's who in black and white comics if the artist doesn't do it in a proper way or, or a good way the, the characters can kind of look the same it'd be hard to pick out who's who um not in these so if you're adverse to averse to getting black and white comics um please give these a shot because these are you're not going to be confused about who's who and that kind of thing and the artwork's just amazing like this is jaime and I, like i think he's one of the greatest cartoons cartoonists in comics today that's still actively drawing comics because love and rockets is still a thing these are only the first 50 issues they then took a break and then they came back with it and still to this day they're releasing issues um it's been released in different volumes and that stuff so it's not easy to just say well they're on issue number 200 um they're in a whole nother set which i think they're on volume like 14 of um so it's still to this day and i think jaime is one of the best cartoonists in comics and it's it it really comes down to his expressions and the minimalist line work that he uses to convey the most of story um it's a gilbert piece well here's all the fate this is a, um love and rockets 50 you can see the, the incredible cast of characters. This is where your cover show off. Why don't I show this off? Here's all the cast of characters that you can imagine being in the story. How they all have very distinct looks. And, like, they all have different personalities in their faces. Like, you can tell a story about all these characters just by looking at them. And also just wondering, wanting to know what the heck is up with this guy. Like, this guy at the horns. Who's like the rich guy in Hoppers. And then this guy with the, he looks kind of like Harvey Dent, Two-Face, right? This guy that's like luchador looking guy. So a lot of distinct characters. Um, a lot of the influences that went into Love and Rockets too were uh, the comics that Jaime and Gilbert said they loved the most were like Archie comics from back in the day uh, or Dennis the Menace, uh, comic books, not the newspaper strip. And a lot of what they said that they liked about it was just, like, a lot of the character things. Like, these characters in these um, comics are constantly moving. There's just constant personality to them. They're never standing in a static kind of way. And things are always happening in the background as well, which is, like, always fun to look at. So every time you read them, you, you pull something else out from the comic book. Um, and these are, for, these are for a mature audience. There is uh, sexual content in here. And uh, some violent imagery at times. But, yeah, so it's, it's almost like Archie comics for grown-ups. And they're drawn in the best way possible. With punk rock and pro wrestling and science fiction involved. So that's the last selling point, I would say, um, on wanting, wanting to try these. So I love talking comics. Like I said, this is Taylor Talks Comics. And 
if you comment on this video for Granite Price Books, I will absolutely uh, be looking, looking in the comments and I will be coming back, commenting back with you uh, to answer any questions you have about this. Um, again, you have the box set as an option or these paperback omnibuses that, oh, geez, there we go, <laughs> that uh, JP said he can order for you as long as they're in print. Um, but again, this is for Organic Price Books. If you're not familiar with Organic Price Books, they're a great website where you can get collected editions for less than cover price. And they have the best customer service in all of collected editions and all of comic books. And on top of all that, they're going to package your books with love and care to make sure that they get to you in primo, perfect mint condition. So it's Organic Price Books. This was a Love and Rockets box set overview. I know I went long here, but I appreciate you staying here with me. Um, thank you once again. See you guys later.